Welcome, everyone, to Courageous Creative Conquerors. This is Jean Voice Dart. It's my belief that everyone has a gift of creative expression. We were born to express ourselves to stay healthy and happy. Whether you are planting a garden, writing a story, building a cabinet, sewing a scarf, or singing a song, what matters is expressing from the heart. And the creative and expressive arts are a healthy coping strategy that shifts us from trauma to triumph. So join me as we listen and learn key tips and techniques from our special guest and courageous creative conqueror. Our special guest today is Karen Baxter, Oshibana artist, craftsperson, and homemaker. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everyone, I'm Jean Voice Dart and this is Courageous Creative Conquerors. And my special guest today is Karen Baxter from Sparks, Nevada. Welcome, Karen. I'm so happy to have you here. Well, thank you, Jean. I'm happy to be here. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Karen is quite the crafter, and she works with flowers making bookmarks. And she's going to show us exactly how she does that and the benefits of that for her personally and talk a little bit about her journey as a creative conqueror. So let's start looking at some of your family photos and you can tell me what life was like for you growing up, where you lived and and who in your family uh, inspired you? Um, these photos are uh, on a glass box that I've had, oh gosh, for a long, long time. I don't even remember who gave it to me, but it's kind of interesting that, that it's, it has pressed flowers because the pressed flowers didn't come in really to my life as far as me playing around with them and and being creative with them until later on. So this box became like a little treasure chest for me. And I kept special photos in there and, and little mementos. But the, um, the two adults are my dad at the top with my, myself and he's holding my sister. And then right below him is my mom and me. And then oh. to the, the, uh, the left of her is my sister and myself. And then the top one with the little doggy is, is me. That was my grandparents' dog, oh. Pomeranian. <laughs> I love it. And can you tell us, do you know what those flowers are? I know you didn't dry the flowers, but do you, are you aware of what those are? That looks like baby's breath. In yeah, the, some of that is baby's breath and then a fern uh, leaf. And then it, it looks to me like little little flocks flowers. They're, they're pretty small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing your family with us there. And where did you grow up? Well, I was born in Illinois in Elmhurst, Illinois, oh. right outside of Chicago. Yes, well, I grew up in Illinois also, so I'm familiar with that, yeah. Yeah, my my mom, my dad grew up in El in Elmhurst. My mom grew up in West Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and they met in West Chicago because my, uh, my grandparents had a Tasty Freeze ice cream Oh Smart. my goodness, Tasty Freeze. And that's how they met. Oh. They were very wow. young when they had me. Mm. Right out of high school. <laughs> Tell us who this is. That's my grandmother, my dad's mother. Um, I come from an Italian family. She played a very significant role in my life. Um, she was just a magnet of love. And I loved being with her. In fact, I was with her for the first three years of my life because my parents 
lived with my, my grandparents when they had me. Oh, and she, she was a homemaker and she loved to cook. She, she loved creating a very loving and beautiful environment for the family with, with the home. Mm -hmm. And I, I take after her. I, I love cooking and I love creating and decorating my home. And I know I got that from her. This podcast is Courageous Creative Conquerors. And so people come on and they share how the expressive arts have helped them through tough times. And so I'm asking you, what makes you a courageous creative conqueror? My parents divorced. I was age 10 when, when they divorced. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was an especially difficult time. I learned a lot through it that, you know, now reflecting on it, it's, it made me who I am today um, because I, I was having to fend for myself a lot of times and my mom didn't handle the divorce very well. And mm -hmm. So I, you know, there was a lot going on with that. That's why my grandmother was so special to me. You were lucky to have her. I was, yeah, I feel that way too. Very lucky to have her yeah. also. Um, and when I actually got started on these bookmarks um, or got started on the flower pressing, it came after going through a divorce. Mm. And so, you know, the kids were grown and they were out of the house and I had gone through a divorce and there's a void that you have to fill when that happens. Mm -hmm. It's brought me a lot of joy. And at times, if I feel like I'm out of sorts or I'm going through something that's hard, I, I, wanna, I wanna do something for someone else. Yeah. And it gives me an opportunity to just put love into something. And that opens the heart again, you know. I like what you said, how it opens up the heart and how you're able to give to others. I think that's so important. And the arts do that. They help us express any kind of feelings that are stuck in there and just let go and, and give to others and find joy and find purpose also in life. Mm -hmm. Find a way to, to give back and tune in so yeah I and, like that word purpose <laughs> yeah purpose yeah. yeah you are a homebody you like to decorate your home and cook and you got that from your grandmother and here's your kitchen here and you have a wreath on the door and it just looks lovely and I love what it says on the wall can you read that to us there yes do what you love, love what you do. And, and why is that of significance to you? Um, well, it being in my kitchen, for one thing, it's, I think it's very important to put love in the food that you're cooking mm. and to put love into everything that you do. Some, and sometimes there's things that we do that, that we don't necessarily love to do, but I've found that it goes smoother if I can figure out a way to put the love into it. And oh. some way, just that shift of uh, attitude maybe, you know, in a sense. So having it in my kitchen, since I'm all, always there, <laughs> it's a good reminder for me of, of, uh, of how I need to live my life you know and oh thank you so much for sharing that that's just so beautiful and particularly with cooking we don't want to be cooking and be mad and tossing all that energy into the salad or the food <laughs> yeah that's that's a a great a great motto to have up on your wall and and also an in inspiration to creative people out there to look to what they love, look to what their talents are and what they have to offer and, and give that out to others. Yeah. I'm always so 
happy to um, be able to share this art with other people because it's it's so easy. It's a very easy thing to do. I'm I'm not a real crafty person. I mean, yeah. I love decorating and things like that, but I don't make the things that I'm decorating with. I buy them. So yeah, and, um, and nature makes it for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so it it opened up a very important um, door for me, you know, to give love to other people and have it be a piece of myself, you know, that, oh. that creative part that I never really thought that I had in that way, but it, it comes out and it, it comes out in a very interesting way sometimes. Yes. And that's why I really wanted you on the program because your message is so important. Oh, thank that, you. That everyone can find a way to give. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're moving on here to what you do, which is bookmarks yeah. made out of flowers. And you said that that first one there was an inspiration to you and kind of started the whole, it lit the fire within you. And can you explain that a little bit to us? Yeah, that's a bookmark that I received a long time ago, probably 30 years ago. And um, we're talking about I, the one on the left all the way. Yes. Up. Yeah. Okay. The two with the two flowers, the light blue, and it's kind of a purplish blue. And I was always so fascinated by, you know, how it was made. But I never take the time to figure that out until I became an empty nester and I needed to fill a void <laughs> and do something that, you know, I, I had just never done before. So I started searching that out over the internet to see how did they make that, you know, and I still haven't totally figured that out, how they actually did that one. But what I did discover, um, the papers in, in the center, they're called vellum. And you get them in like eight by 10 sheets or so. And there's uh, floral ones and different designed ones. And then there are um, just plain colors that you can use. And you just cut it to fit the bookmark that you want to make. It's a thermal laminating sheet that you use as the cover for the uh whatever you insert in the middle, middle of it, the flowers or whatever you want. So if someone wants to do this, they would have to buy vellum paper and laminating sheets. Is that right? Both? Um, yes. If they want to have the look of having something in the background of the flowers, um, if you don't want to have that look of a background, you can just use the laminating sheets. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Wonderful, okay. So go ahead, you were gonna share a little bit more about your journey. How did you, so you saw this, you started investigating on the internet and you started experimenting around with it. And how long ago was that? That was about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a while. And so, so I, before oh. that time, had you done any other kind of art or craft or anything like that? No, not really. No, nope. this is really the first artsy thing that I've ever, I've ever done. Um, I tried to sew. I didn't have the patience for that. You know, things like that. I've knitted. Um, but nothing that was real crafty like this and, and what I would consider like more of an artsy art thing. Yes. And do you use flowers right out of your garden? I do. Um, these are primrose and I love using those because they're so bright and they're a nice uh, shape and size. Um, the flowers that I use for bookmarks need to be a smaller type of a flower. I think it's fascinating that it's also centered 
on a love of nature and flowers and gardening because you have to garden and create these flowers. Have you always been interested in gardening or did you have others in your family that were interested in flower gardening? I wasn't really interested in gardening very much until actually I started doing the bookmarks. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that that generated wanting to plant more variety of things in my yard. Tell us about this. That's a sunflower. And it's it, it was a pretty big flower. That's from last year. But what I did with that was I, um, I, I just plucked off the petals of the flower and pressed those. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would have been way too big to, to press for what I use it for. So yes. I, just, I just one day decided, well, I love those petals, you know, I, and I, I'm, I've got to figure out a way to be able to use them. Oh, sunflowers are so beautiful and it means so much to so many people. So that's mm -hmm. that's a really beautiful gift to get sunflowers, I think. And tell us about this. Oh yeah, this this plant was uh, a very interesting gift of love. <laughs> when we first moved into our house, this this that plant popped up that the first summer we were there, but no buds or anything. And I, I was just fascinated by the leaves. I had never seen a plant like that. And it was real tiny. It didn't, it didn't really have much to it. And I almost dug it up. <laughs> oh my but, goodness. And then by the third summer, that's what this looked like. And I went, oh my gosh, what is this? because I didn't know what peony flowers were at the time. And then that bloomed on Mother's Day and I was blown away. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, it literally took my breath away. I could not believe that this plant and these flowers, that they were the most, I thought they were the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen. They so are. It makes me cry. I'm very sensitive. It makes me cry so beautiful. It's just so heartfelt and sweet and pure and just loving. Beautiful. So let's take a look here at your backyard. Some of these photos we have here. And there they are, the beautiful Sarah Bernhardt peonies. And look at them, they are just in full bloom right now and it's just so beautiful. Is this in the bookmark that you gave me? Well, yours are a Sarah Bernhardt. It is? Yeah. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so this one. Yeah, and that's, you know, again, I can't, I can't press the whole flower. So I pick off the petals and press the petals individually. And you you made this little sleeve to put it in as well, which is so nice. I started doing that just in the past couple of years because um, I don't know what gave me that idea, but because I attached the uh, ribbon to the bookmark, I thought it would be neat for for people to be able to pull it out of that sleeve and and they could see little by little by little what the what the bookmark looked yeah. like. It's just lovely. It's just lovely. And, and look how big that is. And is that an apple behind it? Oh, it's a it's like a a vase with uh, their artificial apples and artificial cones. apples, but and that just cones. gives you an idea of how big it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's they get very big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so these are some of your favorite flowers to work with, and and this I I thought that that looks like what this is to me. Oh, because there are parts of it in there. Yeah, I think it's a mixture. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there are. That's Festiva Maxima. Mm -hmm. 
If I had my way, my whole yard would be nothing but peonies. Because the plant is beautiful too. And the plant, you know, after the peonies have finished blooming, the plant is so green. It's like an emerald green and it's a beautiful plant. Yeah, that, that bookmark is for a friend, a woman that um, I've known for about almost 20 years now. And she, uh, she always says, love you bunches. <laughs> and I adopted it. I love saying it to people that I care about too. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted to send her a, a card um, and that'll be coming up next. A thank you card, just telling her how much, yeah, how much she means to me and the things that she's done to help me in my life. And, and I had the card tucked away and I had bought it for her, but sometimes when I, when I decide that I'm gonna do something, it might take me a little while because I try to listen to that inner nudge, tell mm -hmm. me now it's time. <laughs> And so I made the bookmark and then I went looking for the card and I went, oh my gosh, this card looks like there's a whole bunch of peonies in it. It and, matches the bookmark, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that happens sometimes. And it, I just get the biggest kick out of it when that happens because it tells me that I'm, I'm doing it correctly <laughs> tuning in and yeah, just going with the in. flow of everything and you told me that that little signature there sometimes you put that little blue flower that's your that's little forget me not yeah yeah okay. <laughs> um, all kinds of meaning here all right so here are some beautiful bookmarks look at that yeah um those the yellow or some primrose flowers and the little purple ones are a phlox. They're called purple star. Mm -hmm. And um, the greenery is actually um, an Asian thyme mm. plant. Um, now, all of those flowers were flowers that I actually um, got through mail order mm. for that bookmark. There's a lot of things don't, the primrose, you know, grow. I, we have a picture of the primrose that we showed earlier. Those aren't the, the ones out of my garden because I had made that bookmark a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, some of the flowers that I like to use, I, I can't even grow here. I'd love for you to talk and tell, tell us how you press the flowers. But first, let's find out more about these. Okay, so the um, the red ones in the middle are rose, baby roses. Oh. And roses are tricky because that middle part tends to be thick. But uh -huh. um, I managed to find some that were pretty flat to be able to do the bookmarks with. So those didn't come out of my garden either or out of my yard. And... Um, there's some delphiniums in there. And uh, the white uh, is called Queen Anne's Lace. And I like oh, those okay. because they kind of, they, it's like a burst, like a fireworks, you know, a burst of fireworks, you know, display here and there sometimes throughout the, mixed in with the flowers. So it just kind of makes it pop a little bit. It does. And you just have quite an eye for color and rhythm, the, the way it's arranged. I think like you have the yellow and the purple and yellow and, and then you have the pink and red and white. And it's just blends so nicely and it moves with a musical kind of way I see. So it's oh, just, thank you. I think you do have a talent. You, not everybody can do that. Not everybody can put it on there in a way that looks very pleasing. And you've done that, I think. 
Well, thank you. Yes, you have an eye for that. And so the the leaves, what what are those? Well, there's some leaves in there that are uh, from a tree called rain tree. They're the ones that are at the bottom. And there's some more uh, of the Asian thyme in there and, and maple leaves. Um, and an, uh, what's at the top? Another form of a maple leaf up at the top. There's so many different varieties of maple leaves. Is there a and little then, flower at the top? Something there like is. Mm -hmm. It's called an Indian paintbrush. Oh, okay. That's an interesting flower. And it's actually, um, it, it grows here in Nevada. Oh. Interestingly enough, I went on a hike with my son and it was all over the place. And so I picked some and I made him a bookmark of our day. Um, oh, what a great I, memory, a bookmark of your day. I think that would be fun for children to do, to pick out some leaves and things on the hike and flowers and come back and make a bookmark memory out of it. Yeah. yeah. If you could just talk a little bit about the equipment that you use and show us that a little bit and also pressing the flowers and drying them and how you do that. Interestingly enough, with the pressing, I went and bought a flower press and it's generally two pieces of wood and it's got these little screws at the top and you, you know, you tighten them and you use a certain kind of paper in the middle. Usually if you buy them, it comes with that paper and stuff. So I did that for a few years. And then somehow I stumbled on to uh, using a phone book. And I like the phone book even better than the flower you press. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Why do you like the phone book? I just, I felt like the colors were more vibrant and after the course of pressing them because you have to keep them in there for a while. Nevada is pretty dry and hot, so I don't have to keep them pressed for very long, you know, to get all the moisture out. Um, but it's as easy as that. I just, in the morning, if I'm, if I'm pressing my own flowers, I go out and pick them first thing in the morning. Uh, so, you know, the scent hasn't damaged them or anything. And I just clip them off right at the top of the stem in the uh, the phone book and then put books or something really heavy on top of them. And in a couple of weeks, they're, they're ready to go. Great, okay. And then after you've pressed the flowers, what do you do? You use a particular machine? It's a pouch that I use. So you open it mm -hmm. and actually it looks like this. It's just a clear pouch. It's a, a thermal laminating pouch. And I just set it on the table and I'll arrange the flowers inside of it. And when I'm done arranging them, then I carefully pull down the top and it, it helps them just stay in place. Now, a lot of people will glue the flowers to the um to this this material I don't do that I don't glue them so sometimes they might shift a little bit and which I figure well that's the way it's supposed to be but um I'm very careful mm -hmm. I've had to I've had to go through that process of learning what's best for me which that's what this is right here. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple. It just goes, you just lay the, the um, pouch very carefully through here and it travels through and comes out through the bottom. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It's just, that's probably the hardest part is, is just getting to that point where you're comfortable with the laminator and you know what it's going to do and you hold the, the bookmark, you know, in certain places to help keep the flowers in place. It just takes a little practice. Very good. Or you, or you can glue them. 
you know, you can, it's not going to hurt to glue them. So we're getting near our time to stop and I'd love for you to share any kind of words of wisdom to folks out there that are artistically inclined, but maybe they're thinking, I can't do this or I can't do that. And words of encouragement for those that are seeking a way to express themselves through the arts. What words of encouragement do you have? Well, first of all, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it's if it's the um, if it's something that you want to do, I think that you can figure out a way to do it. You know, I I had that bookmark in my possession that I had gotten so many years ago, and I wondered how did they do that? You know, and it took me almost 30 years to figure it out. Wow. And oh my goodness. Take that step. But you know, it's, I think it's because I really wanted to do it. It was something that caught my attention and it was just always there, that curiosity of wanting to know. Yeah. At first I just did simple things like just, just pressed a flower and put it in a frame, you know, but then I have a lot of books. I, I needed bookmarks. <laughs> yes. And I think it's a wonderful thing. So thank you so much. It's been such a joy having you. And you've really shared some wisdom with us today about putting love into everything you do and inspiring people who are maybe thinking, I don't have a lot of talent. I don't know what I can do. You're showing us something that just is very easy to do and very natural if you enjoy nature and working with your hands. And so thank you for coming today. I'm really delighted that you were here. Well, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. It's a pleasure to have you here. And thank you everyone for joining us and for supporting the expressive arts. We're glad that you came and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> to see more Courageous Creative Conquerors videos, join the weekly creative community calls or learn more about private sessions, visit genevoicedart.com. 